Is there a group of men and women out there who are secretly controlling our finances, our media, communications, and every aspect of our lives? Well, my two guests think that there very well might be. Uh, we have Jordan Maxwell, who has made an appearance in Ancient Mysteries of the Bible on CBS with William Devane hosting it, and he has agreed to come back and do the sequel. And we have Anthony J. Hilder of Radio Free World. Both of these people will be appearing at Wembley Arena in England on uh, Saturday the 9th and the 10th of January, 93. And under uh, Jordan Maxwell's name, there's a quote that I'd like to bring to your attention, and I'd like to start off with uh, Jordan answering this. It is probable that most of the public figures and military men involved in the secret scheme are unaware of the real goals or who is really behind it. Jordan, I've, I've got to ask, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> well, let's, let's start with a, uh, a term that we're hearing quite a bit about in the last couple of years, the New World Order. Uh, our president is uh, going all around the world proclaiming a New World Order. Incidentally, all the presidents, uh, living presidents, along with many of the heads of state throughout the world are going to meet, according to the LA Times, are going to meet in the year 2000 at the pyramid in Egypt to bring in what is called the New World Order. Uh, there is something going on here on an international worldwide scale right b before our eyes, but that so many of us are unaware and consequently we're not really seeing what is happening. Uh, there is in fact a conspiracy or a planned world domination coming by this thing that George Bush calls a new world order. On the back of the one dollar bill, there are a lot of important occult symbolism on the back of the one dollar bill. Uh, on the left hand side, you'll see the pyramid and the pyramid of Egypt. That's an Egyptian pyramid on, a, on an American dollar bill. Um, the significance <clears throat> is very important. Above the pyramid, you will see the words Anuit Coeptus, which basically means in Latin, our enterprise is a success, or our project has been crowned with success. And the, the project, which is a success, is on the banner beneath the pyramid, uh, Novas Ordo Seclorum, uh, being Latin for new order of the world, or the new world order. On the bottom of the pyramid, you will see the Roman numerals for 1776. This exact identical emblem of the pyramid within the circle, the Novus Ordo Seclorum, uh, has not, it was not original in America. It was first found on writings that are today in museums in Europe in the year 1774, 1775, by a man named Adam Weishaupt who founded the Bavarian Order of the Illuminati, a secret society of Freemasons operating in Europe that had designs on the entire world and to bring about what they call a new world order. So that emblem on the back of the dollar bill on the left-hand side with the, with the pyramid is not an American symbol. It is a very old symbol Jordan, coming you from you a... You should bring out the fact that this is the Order of the Illuminati. Yes. And the May 1st, 1776, did not signi uh, signify the creation of the United States of America, no, no, but the all. order of the Illuminati for the enlightened ones or the Luciferians. Yes. And this is a satanic symbol. It is on the cover of the Illuminati documents from May 1st, 1776, which obviously precedes the birth of this nation on July 4th, 1776. Okay. And at the very top of the pyramid, there's the Agpu All Seeing Eye, which was the name of the Soviet secret police during the Stalin era. All right, now, Anthony, you've done, you spent most of your life studying these secret societies and the Illuminati, and you uh, put out a record some time ago called mm -hmm. the Illuminati CFR. CFR, CFR. Council CFR. on Foreign Relations, right. 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 Um, this is, you know, I've heard various charlatans coming out talking about the Illuminati, but I was wondering if you could get into a little bit more detail about the history of this organization and some of the more, uh, you were talking about uh, the eagle, for instance, and mm -hmm. the pyramids and that yes. sort of thing, right. and talk a little bit about the Freemasonry origins of the Illuminati. Well, let me just make this one comment first, and okay. then Anthony can uh, go on with it. The, at the top of the pyramid, you'll see the little triangle with the eye in it. The eye was the eye of Horus, 
uh, Horus was the eye of God, the sun. And so the sun represented the pupil or the eye of God in the ancient Egyptian philosophy. And that's why you'll see the light emanating from around the eye. So it's the worship of light, Luciferianism. It's the worship of the coming forth of light into the world. And therefore our masters, uh, these, these manipulating masters behind the scenes of world government who are manipulating all peoples, uh, consider themselves to be enlightened, enlightened despots, enlightened people. And of course, when you uh, go to university, you graduate from a university, you wear the Masonic square of Freemasonry on your, on your head to symbolize that you're an alumni. Alumni comes from the word illumini. You have been illuminated into the enlightened power structure of the new world order. That's the actual basis for these symbols and to go on with the rest of the symbolism. Well, <clears throat> I think it's important to bring out the fact that George Bush did not write the New World Order. In fact, if you want to know who wrote the New World Order, you simply go back to Adolf Hitler. It wasn't his first book, that was Mein Kampf. The second book, right. The New World Order. Right. And R Rudolf Hess went out and said, uh, in introduction of Hitler, he said, uh, Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. One world, one race, one ruler. That's what this whole United Nations is all about. And I'm for a free world. That's in total opposition to the New World Order. Well, Bush's New World Order may have come from Adolf Hitler, but Bill Clinton's New Covenant clearly comes from the Old Testament. All right, now, the New Covenant, that is a, that is a catchphrase. That is a term which has been used for uh, at least 500 years by a secret society of Freemasons in Europe called the British Israel World Federation. British Israel World Federation, you can see uh, topics in movies based on this subject like uh, there's a motion picture just come out called uh, uh, The Handmaiden's Tale, based on British Israel philosophy for America. A secret society of Freemasons promoting something that is called, as far back as 500 years ago, British Israel philosophy, Anglo-Israel philosophy, which is tying in the Old Testament governmental system to be the basis for a new world order in the coming future. And that's why uh, the well, symbolism... Clinton went to Oxford, didn't yeah. he? And, and it has to do with Rhodes Scholar. Scholar. Right. right. The Rhodes Scholarship Foundation <laughs> and this whole thing of a new covenant comes directly from British Israel Freemasonry. Rhodes Scholar, the Rhodes Scholarship of England. So uh, that we can get into that. It gets, we can get into all of the occult well, British significance of, of of uh, the Democratic Party, uh, his term and uh, his term of the uh, the covenant, the new covenant, and Cecil Rhodes is the founder of Rhodesia. That's yeah. where Rhodesia got its name, and we had a little thing called the Round Table and uh, some of these uh, Luciferian groups. And I say Luciferian, I mean it. Like George Bush Typical. is a member of the Skull and Bones. Yeah. Now, in the Skull and Bones. Uh, Fraternity. This is the Faustian financial fraternity that started up at Yale University in 1832. Came over here as, uh, as a bounce off of the Jacobin Society, which was involved in the French Revolution and the Reign of Terror. At Yale University, they have a structure, and you can go there. Anybody can go there and uh, see this structure they call a tomb. Inside the tomb, they have uh, their initiation and uh, the fellows, they lay down in a coffin, and George Bush was one of them. They lay down in a coffin nude, and they're born again into this satanic order. It's the ritual. It's been there. William Buckley, Jr., the Harrimans. Yeah. Conservatives? Oh. No. George Bush isn't a conservative. Never had Ronald been. Reagan is not a conservative. In fact, uh, Ronald Reagan is so far left. I mean, can I say this? Ronald Reagan is not a conservative. He never was a conservative. He is not a conservative. He never will be a conservative. In the early days, they used to call him Red Ronnie. It's as simple as that. He was in the United World Federalist for 13 years. He was in the LA Committee for a Democratic Far Eastern Policy, which was associated with the Institute of Pacific Relations, which was listed as an instrument of the Soviet Union. This guy is so far left, he makes Fidel Castro look like a member of the John Birch Society. 
all you've ever heard about Ronald Reagan was simply rhetoric. We have a one-party system okay. controlled by this oligarchy. All right, that's George Bush. That's uh, the Skull and Bone Society. And I, okay, I, I, I guess I can see this, but Bill Clinton, though, yeah. um, he was not a member of the Skull and Bone Society. No, I believe, is, is Bill Clinton a member of the Council on Foreign Relations? Oh, yes, he certainly is. He's CFR. Yeah, is George Bush yeah, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Bill Clinton wasn't laying naked in a coffin trying to get born again. No, 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 no. no, no, but, no, no, no. but we have, let me go back to an election, 1980. We had uh, Jimmy Carter from the Trilateral Commission. That's right. We had George Bush from the Trilateral Commission. And John Anderson from the Trilateral Commission is the independent ticket. So it wouldn't make any difference which way the coin flipped. Uh, heads they win, tails we lose. The Rockefellers have never we lost win, an election heads in the last they, 60 years. Well, no, we lose even if the coin landed on its side. They had all bases covered. Aren't you, uh, you know, when you, you mentioned the Trilateral Commission and you mentioned the uh, Rockefellers, mm -hmm. Um, I've heard many fringe groups, pr ranging from the fundamentalists to the neo-Nazis or whatever, taking bits and pieces of this and constructing it to their own agenda. Aren't you worried about being misinterpreted? They all have their own Everybody spin. Everybody has their own spin on it, right? their own agenda. But what we're talking about is things that can be proven from accepted uh, reference works and, and how you use that information to promote your own philosophies, your own agenda, is, is, you know, that's their problem. And there is, you're saying that there is proof that from May the 1st, 1776, that the organization, the Illuminati, began. Oh, you can look that up. And to, the end of this, end of this very day, the Illuminati is still yes, around. Absolutely. All you need the to The cover do of their document is the left-hand side, a reverse seal of the, of the, of dollar, the dollar bill. bill. And it was, in, it was put on there early on, but uh, it was the reverse seal early on. But it wasn't until the Corn Cobb Mystic, Vice President George, Wa not George Wallace, but Henry Wallace, Henry C. Wallace, uh, who talked to Roosevelt and said, "Hey, this thing has got to go on there." Now he had in the White House a little shrine for Madame Blavatsky. Yeah. Blavatsky wrote, uh, "Isis Unveiled" and the well, Secret well, Doctrine. She, yeah, but she had a she had a manifesto going. She, she also had a publication of a, a book. Uh, well, I've seen the books. It's the combined works of Lucifer. Yeah. She had Lucifer magazine, and I've held those copies of Lucifer in my hand, leather bound. Uh, she was the uh, publisher and co-editor with Annie Vassant. And from this Lucifer organization came Theosophy. And there's only, and from Theosophy came uh, uh, Unity, came uh, what is uh, <coughs> yes the this, other this the other one world religion philosophy and if you go to the United Nations they've got a meditation room and you'll find out that the Baha'i religion is the only one that is accepted in the United Nations in the mediation room you're going to find the little uh, Illuminati pyramid so they there's it's loaded with symbology and Jordan Maxwell is the expert on it and what I was going to say too is that the United Nations uses a particular publishing firm for all of their documents and public and books and materials and it's called Lucius Publishing. The United Nations used Lucius Publishing. Lucius Publishing was at one time Helena Blavatsky's Lu Lucifer Publishing. So uh, today the whole Funded concept, by the Lucifer Trust. The Lucifer Trust, United Nations. That's why it's in New York because New York is referred to as the Empire State because it's the new state of the new empire that is coming that's why Steven Spielberg and George Lucas with their Indiana Jones and the Empire Strikes Back. It has to do with occultism. It has to do with uh, numerology. It has to do with a lot of mysticism coming out of theosophy. Uh, the, the point being is that we are involved in some very powerful occult uh, manipulation of the world by some very astute occultists and we are not even uh, beginning to be aware of and, how and far it's, gone it's we are. It's crazy to have a united <clears throat> world government. I don't want to do away with our individuality. Some people are white, some people are black, tall, short, fat, thin, Muslims, Buddhists, Christians, Jews. I like the diversity. I don't want to see a world with 220 nations. I want to see a world with maybe three thousand nations. I believe in the right to integrate, to segregate, to separate, to have linguistic, tribal 
nation states emerge where there are these people, like in Africa, and I lived there for a while, where the Metabeles have been fighting the Mishonas. Let them have their own nation states. Let that division take place. Let there be a free world alliance. Let there be a Croatia. Let there be a Serbia. Let all individuals separate and find a place that is comfortable. Let them do their own thing in their own time in their own way. If somebody wants to be a racist, let them be a racist. Let them have a racist state. Let Israel exist. It is, it's a religious state. Mm -hmm. It has a racist philosophy, fine. But let there be a Palestine. Let there be an independent Gaza. I would like to see the secession of Alaska. I worked there on Radio Free America for three and a half years. I called for the independence of Alaska. It should be an independent nation. Well, you know, when you, you're mentioning all this conspiracy stuff, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, when various things happened, like when the riots happened mm -hmm. um, uh, about six months ago. April 29th and May 1st. Right, and, but, 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 but when it happened and when just about everything bad in our society that's happened, not just the riots, I mean, it's almost tempting to want to believe that there are people behind there pulling the strings and all that because <coughs> it, it creates the false sense of security that, if we can just stop these people, we can have a better life and that sort of thing. But we can have a better life if we stop these people. You don't people. think it's just There's a bunch of incompetent arcade. people just uh, making mistakes and that oh, maybe you're no. just reading no, things? No, no, no. How, how could everything happen just accidentally? I mean, uh, just, uh, everything goes wrong. And it just happens to go wrong every time, everywhere. And we've been getting worse off and worse off and worse off. Ronald Reagan and George Bush who are supposed to be conservatives, quote, conservatives, tripled the national debt. I mean, all of the, the, the debt that was acquired from George Washington through Jimmy Carter, they tripled the national debt, and then reporters get out there and say, hey, I'm uh, thinking that these guys are conservative. They're not conservative. But can't you just God. write it up to a bad economic plan instead of saying that there let are people me, let behind me explain it? Just by design. Let me explain He'll something explain to you. Bad economic you do plan. not get to be president of the United States, and you do not have hundreds of advisors, highly educated, proficient advisors in every field of activity of human endeavor, getting C2 reports every day from the CIA. You're getting USIA, DIA documentation every hour on the hour for the economy of the world all things happening in the earth being, being, uh, being directed to the president's table. You don't make mistakes when you have become president. You have the finest minds in the world working for you, the finest intellects that the Western world can produce. That's why, you, that's why in a dog-eat-dog -dog world, our country is the most powerful economic society on earth because we are a very powerfully intellectual society. We don't make mistakes. Well, Roosevelt put it this way. In politics, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, it was, it was planned be. that way. Right. So they planned on George Bush and Dan Quayle. Oh, yeah. No oh, doubt about yeah. George Bush and Dan Quayle are some fact, of our most intelligent people working. No, for. hell, no, they're not no. our most intelligent people, <laughs> no, but they're, no, no, no. No, they they're, are they are fronts. conspiratorial. They're I mean, when you get somebody from the Skull and Bones and the Trilateral yeah. Commission and a guy who says, uh, everything I am today, I owe to David Rockefeller, founder of the Trilateral Commission. Why is it that we don't uh, talk about this organization? If they were members of the Nazi Party, if they were members of the Boy Scouts, or... Uh, some drag queen over in West Hollywood, we would be talking about them. They would be front page That's headlines. Right. But the Trilateral Commission, 78, 90 p people, who controls all three candidates for the President of the United States in 1980? We, we, have a, we, have a, we, we like to say in this country that we have the ability as Americans to elect. But the problem is we do not have the ability to select. We can only elect, which means that we can only vote for those candidates which are put before us by our masters, our hidden masters behind the scenes. And when you understand that the Democratic and the Republican Party are financed, and believe me, in this world, money is the bottom line, if you have it or if you don't. And the, the Democratic and the, the, and the uh, Republican Party are financed and organized and directed by the same banking families, the same people who finance your banks or the same people who finance your institutions of government. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the, word, the word for bench in relation to a judge sitting on the bench comes from banco, which is in Latin, meaning the bank. The judge sits on the bench, which is a Latin word for the bank. He officiates for the system. So when you go into a court, you're sitting before a, a court of order, which is actually being financed by government. How so many what we're talking yeah, about here is How many people today system. know that the Federal Reserve is not federal? It has nothing to do with the It government. is not a reserve. No. They create that fiat funny money that you use. It's like monopoly money. For less than a penny a note, they lend it to the U.S. Treasury in exchange for interest-bearing bonds. They print this stuff for less than a penny a note. They lend it in exchange for interest-bearing bonds. They issue this into circulation as debt-bearing currency. We cannot exist as a free and independent nation when this evilarchy controls the strings. We have to abolish the privately owned Federal Reserve System. And that's why on the dollar bill it says up in the uh, left-hand corner uh, on the dollar bill, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. The reason it was put on there is because it was a piece of paper, and you have to tell the people that it's legal. You don't have to it tell anyone. It used to say, and it's redeemable in lawful money. Yes. In but lawful, in redeemable in lawful, in lawful money. money. That meant it wasn't, it's not lawful money. It's right. not a dollar. If you have a piece of toilet paper, it can be used and tossed away. But as soon as you print Federal Reserve note, it becomes an obligation of the public to pay. So what we're saying is that the Federal Reserve System has nothing whatsoever to do with the federal government. Just like federal vacuum cleaners and federated department stores has nothing to do with, it's a word. It is a play on words. The Federal Reserve System is a private banking institution with most of its holders. The, uh, the Class A stockholders have never been revealed never. to the United States public. Okay, There's this, never been an audit. Go. Right. Never been an audit. Independent audit. This organization, okay, that you th say is pulling strings here. Mm -hmm. um, who, how many people are controlling this? Is this at the helm of one man or is no, this uh, it's no. an oligarchy? It's an I oligarchy. call it an evilarchy because they want to bring about a Luciferian new world order. And by Luciferian, uh, we're talking exactly, about. You, 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 do you mean? I'm talking about a satanic, a satanic order. And if you take a look at the layout of Washington D.C. and Jordan Maxwell is the expert on this. No, I've, I've got. You right. will find out that the entire city was laid out in uh, in symbols. Uh, if you take a look at the obelisk and the Illuminati pyramid at the top of the. Uh, uh, Yes, as a matter of fact, the, the two, the the two main monument. streets going toward the, the Capitol building, if you take, uh, uh, which I have pictures over the, over the city, looking down on Washington, D.C., you'll see there are two main boulevards uh, culminating in a pyramid. And just at the very top of the pyramid is a street cutting it off. And then within the, the triangle at the top, where the eye on the dollar bill is, is the Capitol. And the Capitol building sits there. It's a pyramid. Then it has the, uh, uh, the Cleopatra's Needle, which is a Washington monument. And the, and the river, the long river way, uh, the long waterway is called the River Styx, which is where Pharaoh went into heaven on the River Styx. It is all laid out in Masonic symbolism. And the, and the five-pointed star, which is a pentagram, has always been used. Satan worship, satanic worship, the five-pointed pentagram. And if you take the arms off of a pentagram, you have a pentagon. And the United States Pentagon is sitting exactly due north, aiming due north at the North Star Thuban, which is drawing power, according to the ancient Egyptians, for, for the god of war. It's the same all pentagram of this is that was on the, the Night Stalker's hand. Right. Now, I'm I trying mean, to get a angle. All of satanic ritual I'm, killings. I'm trying to get an angle, though, on what mm -hmm. exactly you mean by Satanism. Are you referring, or satanic, do you mean the elevation of human reason, or do you, the, the strong survivor, do you mean a group of people who are actually worshiping a bona fide spiritual... Uh, we're talking about the warlocks of Washington here. We're talking about people who have satanic rituals. We're talking about people who believe in a Lucifer 2000. Talk, we're talking about uh, the creation of a new world order in a millennium. When Only George Bush talks survive. about a thousand points of light. What do you think he's talking about, a thousand points of light? Could it be a thousand year millennium? under Lucifer? 
What do you think, Jordan? Yes, oh, I, there's no doubt in my mind that all the terminology are, is the same. If you go back through the speeches that Adolf Hitler made and, and to top Nazi speechwriters, and then, then listen to what Ronald Reagan had to say and, and George Bush, and now our new uh, in incoming president. Well, Hitler the talked about a thousand points yeah. of, uh, he's talked about a thousand year Reich, and Bush is talking about a thousand points of light. And I don't think it's just a coincidence and not that Adolf of light. Hitler's second book is not points of light. And his his term Bush's New World about Order, and thousand Bush's points New of World light, Order. thousand points of light. Light is very important to Luciferians. It has to do with Lucifer. It has to do with satanic societies. And what we're, what we're saying here is that the government of the United States is in the hands of some very powerful, sinister people who are manipulating not only us, but the rest of the world. If you can take a look at, uh, just take a, a, a road map of Washington, D.C. Just take a look at it from the air, and you'll see what appears to be the goat of Mendez. Which, and the goat of Mendez... Which and, is a symbol in Freemasonry. Right. It's a symbol, it's a, it's a demonic symbol within the Freemasonry. You see the goat order. and the, the horns and the whole thing. The, the whole city is laid out like that. It's all over. So what we're basically saying here is that there is nothing happening by chance. As, as I brought out before, the George Lucas and Steven Spielberg with their Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And the Last Crusade is for the uh, Holy Grail, the Cup of Christ. It's not by chance that we have movies like that because they're in, why is Adolf Hitler always involved with Indiana Jones? Uh, the Last Crusade you can't understand unless you understand the First Crusade. The First Crusade was, uh, was developed by what we call the Knights Templars Masonic Lodge. The Knights Templars are the ones that gave us what we call the Columbian faction of the Illuminati, which comes to America and founds itself in the state of New York, which comes from the old York Rite in England, from the Duke of York to old York, England, to New York, the Empire State. Then, if you understand that uh, Europe was dominating, Europe has dominated um, the world for almost 1,600 years, and we refer to Europe as the old world. Therefore, the power structure of Europe is the old world order. That's the power structure of the old world. We're going to be doing some more of this. Well, George Bush is gone, but is the New World Order gone? That's kind of what we were talking about on our last show with our guest, Anthony J. Hilder from Radio Free World, and Jordan Maxwell, a social historian. And um, Jordan, the last time we were talking, we talked about the Illuminati and various conspiracies and all. You wanted to talk about the difference between the Old World Order and the New World Order. Right. We're hearing this term, New World Order, and, uh, and, our, and our troops are in the Middle East because of something called the New World Order. Uh, I just wanted to bring the, uh, to your attention the reason for that term. Europe is referred to as the Old World, and the power structure of the Old World was referred to as the Old World Order. I mean, the old Romanov dynasties, the Rothschilds of England, 
the banking dynasties throughout Europe and the and the uh, the whole power structure of what we call Europe was the European old world order and it dominated the world for almost 1600 years uh, Europe has dominated the world but with the coming of America or Cristo Colombia uh, the founding of America we now are in what we call the new world consequently there is a new world power structure in Western civilization and uh, centered in America and so that's what uh, George Bush is talking about a new world order is a new world fraternal order because the word in the dictionary means a fraternal or a knightly order uh, like the Masonic order a lodge and so what we're talking about new world order is a is a, a power structure centered in the new world and we're seeing uh, terminologies in movies and motion pictures like we said, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas with The Empire Strikes Back. It has to do with New York being the empire state, the state of the new empire connecting uh, New York with the old York dynasty in England. And, uh, and America strikes back at the old order, which is the First and Second World War. And if you understand the connections between the Vatican and the European banking families and Europe being the old world order as opposed to America being a, um, a new world order and the empire strikes back and of course the head of the the all Freemasons will will recognize that Yota is little Yuta or Yota is the is the uh, ideologue of the Knights Templars Freemasonic Order, uh, giving us what we call the York Rite or New York. And so all of these things are mystical symbols and emblems, and from that we, have, we can open up a can of worms and right, all down, kinds. The bottom line, the bottom line of this whole thing is one world government. Right. Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. They want one world, one currency, one race, one religion, and if you ever read uh, anything from Global 2000, you'll find out that they plan to reduce the population of this planet by 25% by the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And how are they going to do that? Designer diseases. Mm -hmm. It's my thesis, it's Dr. Robert Strecker's thesis, that they have created AIDS and disseminated AIDS through the hepatitis B vaccine shots to the homosexual community in the United States through the Public Health Service and to the blacks in Senegal, Uganda, Zaire, the Central African Republic, Haiti, and Brazil for the purpose of reducing the population of the planet by this 25%, by the year 2000, through the smallpox vaccine shots over there. Yeah, what I have a, a, a difficult time uh, trying to get by here, and mm -hmm. maybe a lot of people do too, is we're uniting a lot of things. I mean, the Empire State Building with the Empire, Yoda with the Knights Templar, and now we're talking about AIDS with the government. I'm just wondering, and Christopher Columbus, I'm wondering, isn't there any part of human history where things are just the result of incompetence, <coughs> where right. it just happens? There is a conspiracy of, uh, of, this, of conspiracy. this oligarchy to bring about this global government upon the ashes of the United States of America. And all of you would be enslaved or slaughtered if you don't go along with their gig. The new plan. The plan, yep. the new world order. Novus Ordo Seclorum. It's on the dollar bill. Adolf Hitler wrote it. George Bush is implementing it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, You're appearing at uh, Wembley uh, Arena in England here. And this is, this is uh, one of your posters here. A global deception. And of course it has the AIDS is a man-made disease. That's that's probably a big draw. A lot of people are concerned about AIDS. And it is a man's man-made disease. And it was, it should it was be created concerned. at Fort Detrick. There's no question in my mind about that. The World Health Organization went out to give these smallpox vaccine shots to the innocent blacks. And AIDS is vector-borne. AIDS is a cancer. They don't want to come up with a cure until the population of Africa has been diminished substantially. I think that black people in Africa are an endangered species. In South Central uh, Los Angeles, not far from where we are right now, at one high school with kids giving blood to the blood bank, mm -hmm. it was discovered that there was 90% that were HIV positive. These are teenage black kids. I'm saying that AIDS is not simply epidemic 
or pandemic, it's mega pandemic, and AIDS is murder. This is a, this is, it's a designer disease, and it is a program to mass murder people on the planet, talking to reduce about, the population. Talking about South Central, um, the Illuminati uh, began if I'm to understand you right, on May the 1st, 1776, mm -hmm. and you were uh, ascribing some sort of significance to the fact that, that the riot we had recently happened right. on, uh, on May 1st. April the 29th to May the 1st. That's right. May 1st was, uh, was the founding date of the Bavarian Illuminati in Germany in the year 1776. This you can find in any uh, encyclopedia in any library. Look up the word Illuminati. Illuminati comes from illumine or illuminate, meaning the worship of light, the enlightened ones, those who are the masters who manipulate the world finance and manipulate world government. Illuminati was founded May 1st, 1776, and that's why in Soviet Union and all communist countries you have a great celebration on May Day. May Day was a symbol for, or May Day was the celebration of the founding of the World Revolution Conspiracy in um, in Germany, and then later on goes into France, into uh, the and I French hope they don't have to burn the city before the people see the real yeah. light of yeah, what's and, going and on. And so that's why our, our riot that happened here in Los Angeles happened on May 1st. It was all prearranged, pre-set up by this government, had nothing to do with the people in the area. I've talked to many of the oh, black wait, wait, people wait. in the area. You, you say this government. You mean yeah. you're talking mm -hmm. about by those who control this government? Yeah, I'm talking about those who control this government, not 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 the government itself, but those who are behind the scenes who control this government and decide what it will and will not do. And to control the black <clears throat> projects. The yeah. central, the intelligence agency. Are you able to zero in on exactly who these people are, who are the government, the government? The invisible the government. government. Now, many people invisible. talk about the invisible <clears throat> government. Yeah. I talk about it as an evilarchy. Well, as, are you able to, to te zero in on as who a group, these people are well, in the evilarchy? Members of the Council on Foreign Relations. I'm not saying all members of the Council on Foreign Relations are illuminist. Members of the Trilateral Commission. Members of the Club of Rome. The Bohemian Skull and Bones Society. Fraternity, yes. the, the Bohemian Society. Here's a, a group of presidents up there with black robes, like Klansmen, sitting around this huge bonfire at the Bohemian <coughs> Grove, uh, we have worshiping color, this we have color giant pictures of owl. This. Yeah, we have, we have color pictures of the, of the presidents of the United States, all living presidents today, uh, and dressed in large uh, black robes with pointed headdresses like the Ku Klux Klan, in front of a large open fire pit, a pit of fire, uh, and, the, and the article appeared said that it was after 12 midnight, all the American presidents line up on this altar and worship the owl. And they said the reason why the owl is used in their, in their worship is because it is wise, because it is able to see things in the dark. There's a message there. The owl is wise because it sees things in the dark. And that's why the presidents and the heads of uh, state and the heads of the uh, uh, the, the government that we, we live under all meet at 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night uh, to worship the owl. And this if you, is listen, if history. You, yeah, but if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, we will come back and do another show and Jordan will pull out the all picture. All the pictures. Yes, I want to and see And you can pictures. zero in on Gerald Ford who has some sort of satanic shrine in his home, as I understand it, yeah. from uh, inside sources. Uh, I had talked to, uh, to one fellow at a, uh, this was in Anaheim years ago, at Knott's Berry Farm, after a Billy James Hargis meeting, who had claimed to be a uh, member of some witch's coven, and he'd mentioned two congressmen, which were involved in satanic cults, and they were, uh, I guess, warlocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I only remembered one, because he was the number one congressman for the Republican Party, the House Minority leader, Gerald Ford, then later the selected non-elected president, who then selected the non-elected vice president, mm -hmm. Nelson Rockefeller. So we had a president and vice president of the United States that were not select, not elected by us, but selected by them. And if you take a look at the administrations of Ronald Reagan, who, who mm. said that Jimmy Carter was, should be criticized, or he criticized Carter for having had 18 members of the Council on Foreign Relations mm. and Trilateral uh, Commission appointed to key positions in his administration. 
Ronald Reagan had in excess of 200. He is as phony as a $3 bill. And Ronald and Reagan is not a right winger, folks. He is a phony. He is a phony. He was known in Hollywood as Red phony. Ronnie. Red Ronnie, yeah. It, Red it, Ronnie. You've indicated that this conspiracy uh, has some goal uh, by, that they want to accomplish by the year 2000. Yeah. I wonder if you could spell that right. out. Now, right. I've done an article called Global 2000. There's a thing out there, and you've read it in Life magazine. You've seen the front cover of the NASA SETI program. I mean, you've seen the, the, the big uh, yeah, uh, the picture from outer space, and uh, you've ta they've talked about a hundred million dollar investment, hundred million dollars to invest to find out whether there is extraterrestrial intelligence. Well, there's, there's, they got something going here. You remember War of the Worlds? The radio broadcast? Yes, book. by Orson Welles, 1939. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we've got something else coming in. They're going to make the announcement that they have discovered extraterrestrial intelligence. And this will frighten the people of the world to say, oh my God, how can we deal with this as a nation? But we can only deal with it you know, as the United Nations. Yes, we're going to have a United Nations, a one world government. Yeah, it's necessary, they're going to say. It's absolutely necessary. Why? Tell me. To, for, to defend ourselves from those little green men, from the aliens that are out there. They will make that announcement. And the whole program is phony. It's fixed, it's set up, and you're going to be the patsy unless you understand what's going down and who's doing what to whom. And if you, and if you think that's uh, far, far-fetched, just remember that r the Soviet Union was pr put before us in our media and our television and our radio and our newspapers as being an evil empire, a frightening, powerful, evil, militaristic empire. Who can't and, even feed its own and people. And now today we find it's like the Wizard of Oz. He comes out from behind the curtain. We find out they've been starving all their life. They can't even grow enough uh, uh, potatoes to make uh, vodka. They have to import the potatoes. They haven't even got a railroad uh, tr uh, track across their country. They're starving. They have always been starving. They're broke, and the only military materials they had is the stuff that we sent to them that we are not using anymore, shells of rockets, shells of planes, and it's just an evil empire on paper. Dwayne, you, They're you, starving. You asked about this Luciferian thing by the year 2000. I was concerned when they sent up the Galileo mission because they sent up the Galileo mission to explore uh, the planet Jupiter. That, was, that went up in 19, what is, uh, 87 or so? Seven. Something yeah. like that. It's already gone. It's on its way, folks. It's going to Jupiter. It's going to reach the planet by 1995. It's going to circle the planet. Mm -hmm. And then by 1999, it's going to be drawn into the planet where it will simply explode. What does it have on it? It's got 49 and a, and, a, and a quarter pounds of plutonium, enough for, well, let's say, 10 hydrogen bombs. What is the atmosphere of Jupiter made up of? Hydrogen. Now, this, if it, would to be, if it were to be ignited, would give us a second sun. Right. And I thought, my God, the year 2000, a second sun. I said, where have I read that before? Something struck me. I said, wait a minute, Arthur C. Clarke, mm -hmm. 2010, 2010, Odyssey 2, I went back to the last uh, chapter. Guess what the last chapter's, uh, chapter's called? Lucifer Rising. And he talks about the ignition of the planet Jupiter by the year 2010. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said in the, at the very end of the book, and you can read it, go to the library, pick it up, look at it. It said that the NASA space program was interested, uh, Dr. Robert uh, Jethro, I think mm -hmm. it was, or Jethro, was interested in this particular thesis for the Galileo mission. So we're talking about a space exploration program that not only is going to go, it went up. That was in 1982. This was sent up five years later. It's already on its way. If that thing ignites, <clears throat> it would give us a dual solar system. 
So what we're talking about is and they two would suns. name the planet from Jupiter to Lucifer. Right. And that's exactly what Arthur C. Clarke talks about in well, you know, 2010. I so know we're talking about Lucifer 2000. There'll be no more night time, so there'll be no more opportunity for crime at night. There will be more sun now because you have two suns now in, uh, in our uh, solar system. And the increase so of the growing system growing like the Matanuska Valley north of uh, 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 Anchorage And this may in sound Alaska. pretty far-fetched, but you had better uh, look at the facts. The fact is that this thing is carrying plutonium. It's going to Jupiter, and they know what it's going to do when it does, when it does crash. So and this NASA SETI program could <clears> be used <throat> as a vehicle to frighten the people of the planet into surrendering their sovereignty and to accepting a one-world government. And we've, we're talking about a thing, that, uh, a group out here called the Federal Emergency Management Association, right. which came in mass when the riots took place. They create chaos, as a then they fact, create no, control. Over the world headquarters in, in, in Switzerland of the world uh, Masonic headquarters for world Freemasonry, over the door is Ordo Ab Chao, which is Latin for order out of chaos. And all Freemasons know that term, Ordo Ab Chao. Order out of chaos. The concept is to create chaos, to create the problems. Then while the people are frightened to death of all the crime <clears throat> and everything that seems to be out of control, a riotous situation, the government then moves in with justification. In order to put down this terrible chaos, they must have full power of the military, full obedience of the people to give the government full power to do whatever they want. That's why we're having all over the world wars, riots, bloodshed, famines, all kinds of things happening around the world. It's being manipulated. It's being orchestrated. Not just for Los it's Angeles. Conflict control. Conflict control. There's been more wars since the creation of the United Nations mm -hmm. than before the creation of the United Nations. More wars since 1945 to 1992 than from the beginning of time through night uh, through 19 to uh, 1945 Let me explain and the people this who created point. the council of uh, the united nations were from the council on foreign relations yes. including alger hiss the first secretary general of the united nations organizational Let conference the, uh, when, friend, when, when fundamentalists kind of talk about their ideas that kind of parallel to this uh they at least have what they consider to be some ray of hope that christ will come down and save us all or something like that right. um do you, do the, the two world. of you, ind individual, whatever, have any kind of hope or anything that we, you can yes, give us? The I'm creation of a free world alliance. A free world alliance. A uh, free world, world alliance. That? That's the creation of many, many, many different nations where individual rights and sovereignty is respected so that we can do our own thing in our own time. I'm talking about laissez-faire. I'm talking about free enterprise. Sounds like Not corporate socialism thing. like we have right now. Would it be fair to call you libertarian or not? I'm an anarcho-capitalist, anarcho libertarian, uh, quasi-conservative. Uh -huh. I believe in conserving not the status quo, but conserving freedom. And these freedoms that we have are drifting away. They're going through our, our fingers like water or sand. We've got to grasp hold of the Constitution. We have to use that document or we're going to lose it. And the problem is, is education. That's where the real power is, is in, in the educating of people. Uh, I have no, I, uh, myself, I'm not looking for anyone to come back, no Messiah to come back to help. I'm not looking to any of this. I, m my belief is, is that uh, knowledge is the, is the thing that's needed. People need to wake up and discover who is running their government, what the symbols of government mean, what these emblems mean. When they see the national coat of arms, the, 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 um, the flags, the emblems, the seals, the symbols, all of these things mean something. Educate yourself. Find out where it came from. That's the only hope I see for the human race is the human race itself waking up to find out we've been had. You well, the oligarchy has, excuse me, yeah. the oligarchy has a messiah, Lord Maitreya. I call him Lord Betraya, yeah. who's wrapped in with a theosophical society, wrapped in with all of this Luciferian crap. Yeah. You go up to, to a little yeah. Satan place, Ojai Valley, and I was raised up there in Ojai Valley. You're going to find the Blavatskyites, and you're going to find uh, the uh, uh, Krishna, yeah, uh, Krishnamurti, Krishnamurti uh, yeah. group right next, uh, next door in the Meditation Mountain. And I believe they're going to try to introduce this Lord Maitreya as 
the Jesus, the Buddha, the, uh, uh, as the new Muhammad, uh, he, he's going to be all things to all people. And they're going to be talking about a global government. And we have to unify. We have to bring, d dissolve all of our differences and sort of come into one amalgamated, homogenized group. Let me, let me also bring out that Adam Weishaupt in his writings uh, talked about if, if a group wanted to take over the world, and, and, and which would be a totally impossible mission, but if they, and incidentally, that's where we get Mission Impossible from Impossible Mission Force, which uh, if you remember in the movie, Impossible Mission Force was IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, and the Impossible Mission Force is always working for the government, uh, overthrowing kings, rulers, and princes, but of course the government had no, nothing to do with it. And they but they were the bad guys, yeah, and the one world... <laughs> Uh, and, oligarchies are the good guys, of course, yeah, and then, right? And television has been doing this for years. Then they have movies like Get Smart, Get Smart. And in Get Smart, what did you have? You had the two sides, chaos and control. Again, we have ordo ob chaos. Uh, chaos and control. That's the way you get control is by causing chaos. It's Hegelian so, politics. The Hegelian the dialectics. The right. illusionary right, the Nazis, National Socialists, and the communists. Now, the Nazis believed in total government. The communists believed in total government. You say, well, oh, gee, I'm not over there. I'm sort of down the middle, and you're half Nazi, half communist. <laughs> uh, Adolf Hitler said, basically, National Socialism and Marxism are the same. Yeah. He said that on February 5th, 1941. He said they're, they're the identical. They're the same. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is that uh, when you get back to the original symbol, symbols and emblems of the secret societies, and you understand, as Adam Weishaupt wrote, which is what I was going to bring out, Adam Weishaupt wrote that the one thing that will bring all nations together, all peoples together, because there's so much uh, differences between races and individuals, but the one thing all individuals will come together for is to save their own hide. So if you can create enough bloodshed, enough violence, enough anarchy, if you can finance, organize, and direct it correctly, to, to cause enough civil uh, unrest and civil right uh, law unrest. How about creating a new world order by creating what? The illusion that there are men from outer space. There won't be simply a war of the world. This is a war that is declared <coughs> against the world, and that's what they're trying to bring about. If you take a look at the background of George Bush, Take a look at the background of Adolf Hitler. Where did he get his money? Senator Adolf Prescott yeah. Bush was involved as the, the, the chief man at Brown Brothers Harriman. Brown Brothers Harriman was involved in the financing of Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler... So was General Motors, in. General Electric, uh, uh, Standard DuPont, Oil. Standard Oil. All of these corporations got to be large corporations because they were financing both sides during the Second World War. And that's that it's conflict that, control. It's conflict. Yeah, World it's called War conflict control. Two was engineered. Wars like bridges are engineered. They're created. You don't think the people that own this doesn't Ford, happen by accident. You don't think the people who run the Ford Motor Company or General Electric get up in the morning and and have their meeting and decide what they're going to do today. Well, we can only hope. No, <laughs> they don't plan what they're going to do today. People, they have they have highly trained people who know what the company is going to be doing 10 years from today. They have an agenda. They know how, many, how much oil is going to be needed 10 years from today, how much rubber, how much glass. They have to know these things. You have to plan for an international corporations 10, 20 years ahead of time. And if you think they do it, you have to know that this government does it. And when, if you, when if the you tomb, understand you know. that things are planned for the future. When the tomb at Yale University was violated when they broke in. They went into one room and here's all of this Nazi paraphernalia. This is the, the attorney Yale where University. George Bush laid nude in the coffin, was born again into the <coughs> satanic order. They go into one room. Here's all of the Nazi paraphernalia. Jimmy Carter, refer, Jimmy Carter used to talk about how he was thrice born and all the Christians said, oh, that means he was born again. Right. No, he said thrice born. Freemasons know what that means. If you're an occultist or into Freemasonry, you know what the term thrice born means. And got a thing to do with Christianity. It means that you have been initiated into the secret society. Okay, we're, we're running out of time uh, quickly here. And um, we're running you know, out of time as a nation. Yeah.
<laughs> well, this is, this is certainly a tall order. I mean, I used to think that uh, Campus Crusade's Jesus 2000 was a bit far-fetched to win the world to Christ, and now I'm hearing all this. this is well, they want to win the world for Satan. Yeah. They want a Luciferian 2000 program in their initiative. Ta we're talking right. about the Illuminati, not, not the Campus Crusade. What we need to do right. is incite right. a revelation to avoid a revolution. Okay. Jordan, we can see him on Ancient Mysteries of the Bible, Part 2, coming up sometimes some next time year. Probably in March or whatever. And uh, we can hear Anthony Hilder on Radio Free World. I'd like to thank the two of you for coming here. And I'd like to invite you to come back when you got some pictures and stuff that you could show Absolutely. me. Because I, I, I'd love to see some of these pictures. We will come back with pictures. Jordan's got them all. Yep. I'll tell you I, I want to see Gerald Ford in a Klan uniform. Okay. i got to see that. Okay. It's a okay. black Klansman outfit. <laughs> right.